A little boy climbed an apple tree. He stole an apple, then two, then three. And when he started to climb back down, he slipped and he landed on the ground. Up jumped the devil. Up jumped the devil. And every time he turned around, up jumped the devil and the white knight down. Good afternoon, American and Russian world. Xander J. Hobson here, stand up comedian, entertainer, director, and producer of boxing documentaries and internet troll to those who need internet troll. This is another episode of The Devil's Advocate brought to you by the Brilliant Artist Movement. Folks, I'm trying to grow this here platform, so please subscribe, like this video, share it. And by all means, leave a comment in the comment section because I enjoy checking out the feedback from these videos that I make as well as exchanging opinions and points of views with you all. Um, hopefully you have something nice to say. However, if you feel the need to be a detractor, by all means, detract. Um, we live in America and this is a free country and you are entitled to your opinions. But just know, if you get out of hand with your opinions, I'm going to ruin your day. I am the troll's troll, and trolling me will not be tolerated. So with that said, uh, I want to talk about a couple of guys who, in my opinion, are the Freddy Krueger and the Jason of the black underworld. Those individuals are Clarence Heatley, or the Preacher, as he is better known, and Wayne the Silk Perry. Uh, the preacher, a native New Yorker, and uh, Wayne Perry, a uh, D.C. native or Washington, D.C. native. Um, both of these guys have a lot in common. Uh, first and foremost, both of these guys were a couple of bloodthirsty killers. Well, they are a couple of bloodthirsty killers because I believe both men are still alive. And um, they had surrounded themselves with a small army of goons who were more than willing to do their bidding. Um, I'm sure in a lot of cases, or in most cases, with uh, these guys who were working for the preacher and Wayne Perry, these guys were primarily motivated by fear, but they were probably also motivated by overwhelming desire to impress or to even be just like Wayne Perry and the preacher um, the preacher and Wayne Perry these guys are responsible for over 200 deaths collectively now in some cases these guys put in their own work and they kill people outright themselves but in other cases they just gave the nod and they're goombas carried out the executions for them but nevertheless Wayne Perry is responsible for over 100 murders and the preacher is responsible for over 100 murders another thing that these guys have in common is these guys like to rape other men both seem to be quite fine of emasculating a man sexually and um it's my opinion that these guys got the pleasure not from the sexual act itself but from the pure knowledge of knowing that they had turned a man into a woman short of killing a man raping him is probably the most horrible thing that you can do to him um, the one thing that uh, the preacher did have on Wayne Perry was the preacher would rape a man right before he killed him and often enough he would violate the man's body sexually uh, after he killed him. Uh, again, Wayne Perry and the preacher, these dudes were a couple of monsters. Um, again, I can't stress enough. They were the stuff of nightmares. They were the stuff of horror movies. I'm sure that Stephen King uh, Dean Koontz or any other horror film writer would have derived a whole lot of pleasure from just tapping into the sick minds of Wayne Perry and Clarence the Preacher Heatley. 
Scary, scary guys, both of these dudes. Now, I seen a handful of documentaries that gave me the impression that the catalyst between the preacher and Wayne Perry was Alpo Martinez. A handful of these documentaries that I saw giving me the impression that Alpo Martinez had fled to Washington, D.C. not only to evade capture or retaliation for killing Rich Porter, but also because the preacher crew had gotten a bead on Alpo Martinez and they had designs on extorting him or taking him down into that basement and killing him. Now, I don't know how true this stuff is because I am from Philadelphia and while all of this stuff was going on, I was serving my country in the United States Marine Corps and these guys weren't even on my radar screen. But after checking out these documentaries, um, I really got the impression that Alpo Martinez had fled down to Washington, D.C. in order to avoid criminal prosecution, but also to avoid the preacher. Now, we know that he was definitely trying to avoid criminal prosecution, but again, whether he was trying to avoid the preacher is something that is up from discussion because again, it's just pure speculation and nobody actually knows this. But with that said, wouldn't it have been interesting if Alpo Martinez and Wayne Perry would have bumped into the preacher crew while they were out and about partying and having fun perhaps they might have been at an NBA championship game perhaps they might have been at a Super Bowl who knows where they would have been but wouldn't it have been interesting is Alpo Martinez and Wayne Perry would have found themselves coming face to face with the preacher gang as a matter of fact let's take Alpo Martinez off the table because this video is about the preacher and Wayne Perry wouldn't it have been interesting if Wayne Perry and the preacher would have came face to face and they would have found themselves locked in a heated battle. Man, that would have been a good one. It would have been comparable to King Kong versus Godzilla, Thanos versus Dr. Doom, Freddy Krueger versus Jason. Oh man, that would have been interesting to see Wayne Silk Perry and Clarence Heatley the preacher go head to head what would have happened who do you think would have won that one it would have been quite interesting don't you think but on the other hand there's a strong possibility if Clarence the preacher heat me and Wayne Silk Perry would have came face to face there's a possibility that nothing would have happened because a killer recognized the danger of getting into a conflict with another killer and there's always the possibility that if Wayne Silk Perry and Clarence Heatley, the preacher, would have came to face to face, perhaps nothing would have happened because each one would have took inventory of the other and realized the danger that they was up against. And perhaps instead of actually engaging in battle, they might have just gave each other a long look and then nodded and went the other way. So... This is what I've been thinking about. You know, I'm trying to grow my platform the best way I can. And one of the ways I think would be a good manner in which to grow my platform is to throw out thought provoking videos like this to get you guys talking and exchanging opinions and points of views with each other. So with that said, what do you think about the video? Uh, leave your comments in the comment sections. I'm, I'm really eager to check them out to see what you guys would think on this one. Um, again, it's asking me, Wayne Silk Perry and Clarence the Preacher Heatley. Man, these dudes were the Freddy Krueger and the Jason of the Black Underworld. These two guys were monsters. But again, what would have happened if these two guys would have found themselves going head to head and locked in a heated battle? I'm eager to see what you're going to say. Bam!